Hello everyone, welcome back. In the last lecture, we have discussed about transcription in prokaryotes. Today, we will discuss this important topic that is transcription in eukaryotes. As compared to prokaryotic transcription, eukaryotic transcription is complex and it requires a lot of transcription factors. And this process occurs inside the nucleus and after that, the mRNA is transported through nuclear pore into the cytoplasm where it codes for specific proteins. So in this lecture, we'll discuss transcription in eukaryotes in detail. So let's start. As we know that transcription is the process of formation of mRNA from DNA is known as transcription, which is the first part of gene expression. So there are some similarities uh, with prokaryotic transcription in case of eukaryotes, which shows similarities with prokaryotic transcription. And in case of prokaryotes, this process is highly complex. The process of transcription is highly complex in case of eukaryotes. And it occurs inside the nucleus where RNA is synthesized. And then this RNA is uh, transported to cytoplasm for translation. And after the formation of RNA inside the nucleus, this RNA is transported to the cytoplasm. This process of formation of mRNA is done with the help of enzyme which is known as RNA polymerase 2 and uh, this is responsible for formation of this mRNA that is messenger RNA in case of eukaryotes. There are three different types of RNAs that is RNA polymerase 1, RNA polymerase 2, RNA polymerase 3 which have different functions. Eukaryotic primary transcript undergoes three major post-transcriptional modifications before leaving to cytoplasm. So in case of eukaryotes, this mRNA is not functional uh, as it is formed. Uh, it undergoes some modifications which are known as RNA processing. And this RNA processing occurs in three steps. The first one is the capping process in which at 5' prime end there is addition of 7 guanosine methyl group uh, in 5' prime end. Then second process is the splicing in which the non-coding sequences or non-coding regions which are introns, they are removed by the process of splicing. It leads to formation of one structure which is known as spliceosome. This action is performed by uh, small nuclear RNAs, that is SNRPs, SNRPs. Then the third step in case of RNA processing is tailing. So it involves addition of poly a tail at the three prime end of the RNA. Next steps involved in eukaryotic transcription as uh, as in case of prokaryotes where there were three steps similarly in case of eukaryotes there, were, there are three steps in transcription which are initiation then elongation and finally is the termination. First step is initiation of transcription in case of eukaryotes. So for this uh, process, along with RNA polymerase, eukaryotes require several other, put, uh, other proteins which are known as transcription factors. So some special transcription factors are required uh, for this transcription to initiate uh, this transcription in case of eukaryotes. These uh, transcription factors first bind to the promoter region and then helps to recruit the appropriate polymerase. So this is the function of these transcription factors. So RNA polymerase 2 is mainly involved in the synthesis of mRNA. Promoter recognized by RNA polymerase 2 consists of conserved sequences. So RNA polymerase uh, recognizes this promoter region because of some special sequences or conserved sequences which are present in the promoter region. Short conserved DNA sequences known as Tata box found 25 to 30 base pairs upstream from the start site of the transcription. So uh, some special sequences or conserved sequences are present in the promoter region. So this is the DNA. And uh, this is the start site of transcription. From this site up to 30 bases upstream, it uh, contains some special conserved sequences which are known as uh, Tata box which are adenine or thymine rich sequences. So this is the unique feature or uh, we can say 
RNA polymerase recognizes this region by these sequences which are upstream that is up to 30 bases upstream from the start of transcription site. Another conserved sequence is called CAAT cat box uh, which occurs near the position that is minus 80 that is 80 base pairs upstream so up to 80 base pairs upstream here it found special sequences which are CAAT. So these are some conserved sequences which are present in the promoter region and these sequences are recognized by this RNA polymerase too. There are another, another two uh, elements which are known as GC box consensus which contain guanine rich sequences and octamer box uh, which are also present in the promoter region. So these are the various uh, conserved sequences which are present in the promoter region of eukaryotes. In the first step, there are some special uh, proteins which are known as Tata binding proteins. They comes to this Tata box and binds itself to the Tata box. Then it is followed by the another transcription factor, Jiska uh, subunit Tata binding proteins, and that is known as TF2D, that is transcription factor 2D. So the Tata box is the binding site for transcription uh, factors known as Tata binding proteins which itself is a subunit of another transcription factor known as transcription factor 2D. So the Tata binding proteins, these are the subunits of this transcription factor that is transcription factor 2D. After binding of this transcription factor 2D, Tata box or to the Tata box by the trans uh, Tata binding proteins, four more transcription factors and RNA polymerase combines around the Tata box in a series of stages uh, which leads to the formation of a complex known as pre-initiation complex. The transcription factor 2D is bind with Tata box ke saath, through this uh, subunit that is Tata, uh, Tata binding protein. It is followed by four another transcription factors along with RNA polymerase uh, which leads to formation of complex known as uh, pre-initiation complex. One transcription factor that is transcription factor 2H it is involved in separating two opposite strands so this transcription factor 2h it is involved in separation of two uh, dna strands it helps in basically unbinding of dna to provide rna polymerase access, access to a single standard dna template so this is the function of this uh, transcription factor 2h and which is followed by uh, following the transcription factor 2A which joins the complex, this 2A which joins the complex upstream from the transcription site and this is followed by transcription factor 2F and RNA polymerase 2. So these both uh, comes uh, simultaneously and joining the initiation complex. So this transcription factor 2 and along with RNA polymerase they binds to this Tata box region to uh, this initiation complex. Then transcription factor F which contains two subunit and comes transcription factor F it contains two subunits. One has DNA unwinding activity. Then it is followed by transcription factor 2E which joins the initiation complex. So it leads to formation of this complete uh, complex that is initiation complex which will start the synthesis of mRNA. So there are some proteins which helps in increasing the rate of uh, transcription which are known as activator proteins. So these activator proteins increases the rate of transcription and there are some other proteins which inhibit or decrease the rate of transcription which are known as repressor. So there are two types of proteins, one which activate the or increase the rate of transcription another which represses the rate of transcription known as repressors. So RNA polymerase 1 and 2 requires similar transcription factors and promoter complexes to initiate transcription. So to RNA polymerase 1 hai or 2 hai unhe bhi special transcription factor chahiye in uh, or promoter complex to initiate the process of transcription. And the next step, the next step in case of uh, eukaryotic transcription is elongation. In this step, this RNA polymerase that is 2, it moves ahead from the initiation complex and they catalyzes RNA chain elongation by the same mechanism as the RNA polymerase of prokaryotes. So the functioning hai RNA polymerase 2 key in case of eukaryotes, it is just similar to that of RNA polymerase in case of prokaryotes. Initially at 5' end of this mRNA, 
which is known as pre-mRNA or hnRNA in case of uh, eukaryotes this 5 prime end is modified by the addition of 7 methyl guanosine elevated as 7 uh, methyl guanosine in previous slide i have mentioned 7 guanosine methyl it is 7 methyl guanosine so this gap is added at the 5 prime end of this mRNA so this is the part of RNA processing that, that is addition of 7 methyl guanosine at the 5 prime end of newly synthesized mRNA then this 7 methyl guanosine caps are added when the growing RNA chains are only 30 nucleotide long when it is 30 nucleotide long on at that time this capping process is done in case of newly synthesized mRNA or pre-RNA the 7 methyl guanosine cap are recognized by protein factors involved in initiation and also protect the growing RNA chain from degradation by RNAs in the cytoplasm. So main function is that the protein factors hain, wo is, uh, 5 prime end ko recognize karte hain in the initiation. That is the uh, protein formation ka initiation hona hai, usme ye recognize uh, kiya jata hai by the protein factories or protein factors which are involved in protein synthesis and it also protects the RNA growing chain from the regulation by RNAs jo RNAs hain, nucleases hain, jo break down karte hain RNA ko un enzyme se bhi ye cap protect karti hai so this is the function of this uh, 5 prime 7 methyl guanosine cap in case of eukaryotic mRNA then the third step is termination the 3 prime end of nascent RNA transcribed by RNA polymerase 2 is produced by cleavage of primary transcripts by the endonucleases rather than by the termination of transcription. So, जो ये termination है, इसमें कोई transcription uh, sequences नहीं होते special, it is cleaved by enzymes which are known as endonucleases, जो इसको separate करते हैं, uh, mRNA को from the, this uh, transcription complex. The actual termination event often occurs at multiple sites that are located 1000 to 2000 nucleotides downstream from the start site uh, that will become the 3 prime end of the mature transcript. So, so this termination is in many sites pe ho sakta hai simultaneously ye, which are located 1000 to 2000 nucleotide downstream from the transcription site. Suppose this is the transcription site which is starting from 1000 to 2000 nucleotides downstream uh, site that becomes a 3 prime end of the newly synthesized mRNA in case of eukaryotes the first synthesized RNA is known as pre-mRNA or also known as hnRNA that is heterogeneous nuclear RNA it will undergo processing to form the functional mRNA the cleavage event that produces 3 prime end of a mRNA transcript occurs at 11 to 30 nucleotides downstream from the sequences that is AA, UUAA that is adenine rich sequences so wahan se jahan pe ye sequences present hain AA, uh, U, <coughs> U wahan se 30 nucleotide uh, 11 to 30 nucleotide downstream, uh, downstream sequences pe uh, cleavage hota hai, breakdown hota hai is mRNA ka after cleavage the enzyme poly A polymerase carries addition of poly A tail about 200 nucleotide lengths to the 3 prime end of transcript so after this cleavage there is an enzyme which is known as poly A polymerase that added the poly adenine groups at the 3 prime end of this mRNA which is known as poly A tail and this process is known as tailing the addition of poly A tail to eukaryotic mRNA is called polyadenylation so this process is known as polyadenylation the poly A tail of eukaryotic mRNA enhances its stability and plays an important role in its transport from nucleus to cytoplasm so the main function of this 3 prime poly A tail is it provides stability for this mRNA and uh, plays important role in its transport from nucleus to the cytoplasm so this was all about the eukaryotic transcription process and this was all about for us to the discussion about transcription in eukaryotes hope you you will get some idea from this presentation 
If you have any questions, queries and any suggestions, you can give it in the comment section. Thank you. Have a great day.